I'd like to I'd like to welcome you all here. Can you say hi to Warren? Hi Warren! Hi. Hi. I want to introduce you to his mother too. Where'd you go, Sandra? Oh, can you say hi to Sandra? Hi, hi Sandra. So I uh, I want to tell you about Warren's story, but I need to explain a little bit about his condition. Now, I have asked, I want to know again, how many of you do know someone with a disability? Either in your family, or you've just met them, or you've, you spend time with them, or a friend? See, good, hands down. So we, we all probably know someone who has something. Even my father-in-law, he has his leg chopped. He has his leg chopped off, so he has one leg. So he, he also, but you know, he's, he does fine, just like Warren. So I want to tell you about Warren. Warren first has what they call epilepsy. So I'm not sure if I told you, but when sometimes, even if he's sitting here now, sometimes his brain will just switch off, like your computer. And sometimes he'll fall, or sometimes he'll just stay there, and it's fine. I just have to make sure he doesn't hurt himself. Hey, Warren. Yep. He's good. And sometimes he puts a hole in the wall. But you see, he wears, he wears another hat that helps him when he walks around. It's like a helmet, but it's a cap. So Warren has spent this time with me for a year. Now I want to explain what psychosis is. Psychosis is when they don't know what, they get mixed up with reality. What's right, what's wrong, what's true, what's not. And, and then Warren sometimes has voices in his head and he has to try and compete with the voices. And sometimes you'll see him trying to tell the voices to get lost because they interfere. Yeah, see they interfere with him. And when you have more people talking to you at once, it gets really confusing. So I wanted to first explain that and then the second thing, he's nonverbal because of psychosis, which means he, he, can, make, he can talk but because of what he has, his words sometimes don't come out. So, um, he's going to sing with me. <laughs> okay? So, that's a big, big thing for Warren, just to sing with me. Because sometimes no words come out. But we'll see how he goes today. So, what I wanted to do is quickly show you a video. It's around about mm, 50 seconds. Um, this video is, uh, tells you, explains to you what epilepsy is. So just watch this little video. What is epilepsy? Epilepsy is a neurological illness, or illness of the brain. The communication or information exchange between different parts of the brain occurs through electric currents. There are billions of wires that connect billions of neurons and make this fast and continuous communication possible. If at any point in time there is a short circuit at some point, then that particular part of the brain, or sometimes the whole brain, stops working temporarily. This phenomenon is called an epileptic fit. Some of the patients may lose awareness during this time for one to two minutes. They may not respond to the bystander's commands. After the fit is over, they regain their consciousness level in the same position and start communicating normally. Another peculiar thing is that 99% of the people get back to their normal self within 15 to 30 minutes after a seizure, as if nothing happened, or at least no permanent damage has occurred to the brain. Living a normal life with epilepsy is absolutely possible. They should behave and feel like a normal part of society. In reality, these epileptic patients, if properly treated, can become an important part of our society and can serve humanity. So that gives you a little understanding about what happens to Warren. And he's fine. It just looks a little dangerous if you're not used to it. So if Warren did have a seizure, have a fit, all you've got to do is make sure they're safe. You're not going to hit anything. If he lies on the ground or sits on the seat, you just stay beside him. And you just stay with him, make sure he doesn't hurt himself. Now, do you, do you remember when I got you got conducted for you? And you clapped? I don't know if I did it. So Warren is going to conduct. You guys have to clap. Now, so now, once he starts this, this means everybody. So here he goes. Keep going, keep going. He's still conducting.
<laughs> oh, well done. Give him a clap. Thanks, Warren. Now, Warren is going to sing with me this song. He's going to sing with me first. Then I'm going to put the words up, and you're going to sing the song as well. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take the sunshine away. Ready, everybody? You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take the sunshine away. Now, the reason we sing that song, two reasons. First, Warren knew it. Second reason, it's the tune of this next song. One day, a Tanefa. Tanefa is a monster. He went swimming in the Moana. You know what Moana is? Oh, yeah. Moana actually means in the ocean or in the sea. Yeah. He went swimming in the Moana. He whispered in my taringa. What do you think that is? Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. your taringa is your ear. Then the next one you'll see, it says, um, underneath the kōwhai tree. A kōwhai tree is a big, beautiful yellow tree in New Zealand. It actually has medicine. In the, in the leaves in the tree. And then Tanefa, goodbye. So it's the same tune. One day of Tanefa. So you ready to sing one? You gotta sing it with us. Ready, go. One day of Tanefa. Went swimming in the Moana. He whispered in my Tarina. Tarina, Tarina. He said, won't you come with me? There's such a lot to see Underneath the deep blue sea Bit louder! But I said no, no, no You better no, no, no. Although I know we could be friends My mother waits for me Underneath the kōwhai tree Tanefa haere Tairu a tōrupa Give yourself a big clap <laughs> Now How did I meet Warren? You see, because of COVID I, I um, didn't have work it's all the school shut. So I thought, I've got to work. And then I started working for a company called Guardian Group. And they put me with a few other guys. And then eventually they put me with Warren. So I've been with Warren for over a year now. And it was awesome because Warren loves the same things I love. He loves sport. Who likes sport? Me! <laughs> yeah. Now Warren loves sport. And I did too. So I said, let's go. You know what? He bowls. We go golf, we play golf, we, what else do we do? We go racquetball, he really likes racquetball, and we do so much. But then he started something that he hadn't done before. I just started it with him. Painting. And doing art. Have a look at that. Do you know, he started to paint, and I said, let's paint some horses. He painted those horses. But he didn't even use a brush. We used a piece of cardboard. And you see the lines? He started to do the lines through. Now, I thought it was so awesome what he did that I actually made a YouTube channel of how he actually painted it. So he did the horses. Do you see the one up in the top right hand corner? Yeah. This one up here? It's an elephant. Can you see? There's the tusks. This is the trunk. That's the eye. And there's the ears. You know, 
I, I kind of start it off, I draw the elephant and I say, go for it, Warren. And Warren starts doing his thing. But this one here is a garden. He, he did this now. What I do is because I help Warren, I give each painting a percentage. How much I help Warren to do each painting. So this one here, I, I helped him around about 10, 15%. And he did the rest. This one, I helped him about 2%. So he did that one, and that one was around about 5%. So he's starting to, I want to get him to do it 100% so he doesn't need me to help him. He's turning into an amazing artist. But you know what our favorite, favorite one is? Show him this one, Warren. That's right, it's, it's called our, our fluffy cow. Now, it's made from spaghetti. So we cooked up spaghetti, didn't we, Warren? And we chucked it on it, we painted it first, and then Warren started to paint it. So we sprayed it so no bugs would eat the spaghetti, but it's all spaghetti. So in the holidays, if you want something to do, get some spaghetti and start doing spaghetti art, we call it. And so this is our fluffy cow. Thanks, Warren. Now, Warren went to school. So he, just like you, he, but he went to a special school. And when he went to school, um, at school, sometimes his mother would come to school and find Warren in the office. Maybe with a black eye or a cut lip. Because Warren used to protect kids from bullies. Sometimes the bullies would pick on kids and Warren would stand in the way and stop them. So he would get hit sometimes. But that was really good of him to stop it. And he did. He just stopped it. So what we what I have done is I've <laughs> Yeah. So I've made this we've got this poem. Now who's who's heard of the book um Green Eggs and Ham by Dr. Zeus? Good. Now that kind of poetry, there was a competition in America. And a lady named Becca Teagan, she wrote a poem like green eggs and ham. She won the competition like last year. I emailed her and I said, oh, I love your poem. Can I use it at a school I go to? And she said, sure. So I'm using her poem to tell you a story about bullying. This is a bit about what Warren used to do. And it's called the great, and the great means the bully. So Warren's gonna help me by holding up a sign. So you've got to be a bit faster, Warren. So he's going to hold that sign up. Let me turn him around. So you hold up this one first. He's going to hold the sign up and you have to say what's on it. On it. So hold that one up, Warren. Now when you say what's on it, you've got to say it with a little bit more oomph. Okay? Here he goes. Say this. Okay, bit, bit more oomph, ready? Good, good, okay, hold that down, Warren. Soon, not yet, we just, that was a practice. That was a practice. So as soon as they say it, Warren, you can put it on the ground. Okay, put it, hold it, just hold it there. Okay, on a warm summer's day in the month of July, in a town as small as a grasshopper's thigh, walked the girl with the flower, with her eyes looking down, when she bumped into a someone wearing a frown. Now this someone was someone she had met once before because he had said words that she tried to ignore. So she turned on her heel and headed away. When this someone called after her and shouted out, Hey! Hey you, Missy, you know who I am. I'm someone who will and someone who can. You see, I'm disliked in this town, so you know what I'll do. Because they hate me, I'll make them hate you. Now the girl with the flower started to shake, because she knew from before this guy was a great. And all greats are unfriendly. They're mean and, and they make girlies cry. The next day she's walking with her eyes cast down, when who should appear? <laughs> the great with the frown. See, I told you I'd be here to maim and to crush. And then he said words that would make a hog blush. Now the girl with the flower stood there confused. 
Because she did not deserve to be hurt or abused. Just an unlucky victim of breaking scene by someone so vengeful, grumpy, and mean. So she stood there silently. Because she knew she should. Because defending herself wouldn't do any good. And the Greg went on for what seems like an hour. Because if you give a Greg an audience, it gives him the power. He ranted and threatened and made such a shrill because he's someone who can and someone who will. Now the crowd had become forming, just gathering around to watch the poor girl and the Greg with the frown. The crowd, they all came. They stopped and they stared. They tried to speak up, but they felt a bit scared. So they stood there, shaking their heads. <laughs> That's it. Just go like this. I know. Shaking your heads. And I thought, glad it's her there and not me instead. The, ne the next day, the great attacked the poor girl and made such a scene that the crowd gathered around. Not yet. The crowd gathered around to watch him be mean. Now the girl with the flower took it all in. With a tear on her cheek and a trembling chin. She felt the whole world start to crash to the ground when suddenly she heard the most beautiful sound. Stop it, you meanie. You're nothing but bad was a voice from a young girl named Lulu McMahon. You're nothing more than a big awful great. Stop it right now and go. Oh, wait a minute. Stop it. Right now, and go away. Oh, wow. <laughs> jump in the lake. All eyes are on Lou, but she stood her ground. She walked up to the other girl, and they both turned around. They both stood with their back to the grave. What a simple yet wonderful statement to make. Then two people joined them and stood with them proud. Then two more. Then three. Then the whole. Oh. Oh, yeah. Then the whole blooming crowd, until every last one had their back to the grave. Then he finally realized he had made a mistake. <laughs> if someone's been harassed or put down, it's not very nice to stand there and not make a sound. Do not be afraid to stand up for what's right, like Warren did. And make all the Greeks lose their fight. Cheer! Yeah. Cheer! Go! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.